All right, folks, let's talk reinforcement. Typically, with reinforcements of these gates to prevent them from sagging, you want a reinforcing piece that runs from the post side of the highest point clear across the entire gate towards the opposite end, lower side. I'd argue that. So um, he's starting, he said, from the high point on the post side to the low point on the away side, which actually you would want it opposite. This reaction video sponsored by Nationwide Industries, but Nationwide Industries is more than just a sponsor. I legitimately enjoy doing business with them, both with the Cornerstone 2 hinges and the Trident latch that we use on our pool gates or on their full line of chain link hardware. They're great people to work with. I appreciate them a lot. If you're looking for a supplier, you should check them out too. All right, guys, today's video is titled How to Build a Fence Gate No Sag from the Mr. Build It channel. Gates are always a subject of discussion because they're the number one callback nationwide for fences in general. It's important to get the gates right. Let's see how Mr. Build It tackles this gate. Hey, what's up guys? Uh, in today's video, we're gonna be tackling down this fence. Uh, we bought a fifth wheel trailer camper thing. We're gonna park it right here. We need this thing to go this way. So uh, we're gonna build up thing. So um, let's go. I assume since he's using both hands, he's referring maybe to a double gate. This would be a single gate maybe. I don't know. So for the actual material of the fencing, I went with a cedar. Yes, it's expensive, but in the long run, I wanted to match the aesthetic of my backyard. And number two, I wanted to actually last longer without any kind of upkeep on it. Cedar's a nice choice. It's it's certainly an upgrade for pressure-treated pine. The truly longest lasting gate, uh, you could probably argue steel frames. We prefer steel frames on steel posts just because we don't like going back. We've got a lifetime workmanship warranty. I don't want to have to go back to adjust these gates. So steel frames on steel posts is pretty much the most bulletproof. It's never actually bulletproof, but cedar is a nice upgrade from pressure-treated pine. The overall distance opening on the trailer gates, I wanted to be 135 inches wide. That is a maximum setup that I can for my backyard. And the height was 73 inches tall. So that means with those kind of measurements, I would have about roughly 65 inches per gate. That's leaving about an inch on each side to actually open and close. So that makes sense. So it's a little bit over five foot of leaf, um, which is a pretty decent opening. Typically, so that gives you a little bit over a 10 foot opening, which is uh, like I said, decent size opening. Five foot would probably be the limit on what I would want to do uh, with wood frames. When we were installing wood frames, five foot was kind of our limit. Seems like anything more and you're really tempting fate on that thing sagging. It looks like his posts are already set. So I'm not sure why, uh, not sure why we're building the gates on the driveway instead of simply building them where they hang. Uh, but we'll see. So I'm butt joining all the frames around the two gates. Uh, the screws that I'm using are outdoor screws by Hillman. They're ceramic coated ones. They're specifically meant for deck screws. These were extra laying around the house, so I decided to use them. The, I like the screws. The exterior coat screws is a nice touch. They're also plenty long, so he's going to get good contact. I'm not a huge fan of... Um, of building them on end rather than building them flat as far as the structure goes. And the butt joints, if if you're gonna take the time and build it offset or build it off site from the gate opening itself, um, you could use, there are stronger joints out there uh, that would really make this thing strong, but we'll see where it goes. They work fantastic. I can't say anything bad about them. Typically I use SPACs and they work incredible. I didn't have any, so this is what I'm going with. Make sure for the butt joints on the edges, you pre-drill the pilot holes. So you don't want to split your lumber. Uh, just to kind of little uh, tips of the trade. Once I got everything all set up, I was ready to get the reinforcements in play. That way these things don't sag. Hey. You always need to have at least uh, one or two supervisors slash helpers on hand. What are you doing? Are you watching? Are you learning? You better learn. Yeah. Are you going to build too when you grow up? Mm -hmm. I like that he's. I like that he's bringing the kids up building. That's a whole discussion that kind of construction industry in general is having right now. Is trying to bring a younger uh, demographic into the workforce. So I like that he's starting with uh, with the kiddos young. All right, folks, let's talk reinforcement. Typically with reinforcements of these gates to prevent them from sagging, you want a reinforcing piece that runs from the post side of the highest point clear across the entire gate towards the opposite end, lower side. I'd argue that. So um, he's starting, he said from the high point on the post side to the low point on the away side, which actually you would want it opposite. So you'd want it from the low side on the post to the high side on the gate 
so that that sits in compression so it's always pushing down that way it's not you're not relying on the fasteners to try to hold everything together that it'll really just be compressing the gate corner through the brace down to the next gate corner which is uh, braced up with the hinge to the post push rather than pull now in my situation i want to tackle two things make it aesthetically appealing kind of like a farmhousey kind of look and number two give it extra reinforcement so i'm going to do a double x reinforcement here to accomplish this, if you don't have a protractor, here's the dummy way of doing it. Take your eight foot board of the two by four seater, lay it across exactly where you want that miter cut to go. Take a pencil, establish the markings, bring it to your miter saw, or just use your circular saw, establish that cut. Make sure it's nice and snug, that way the screws can actually tighten everything together. So since he's using a cross brace or a X configuration here, he's really gonna be braced both ways. So he will have at least one, he'll have it in compression, one of the braces. So it'll still function correctly, but if you're only gonna use one, you would wanna use it from, again, like I said, the bottom of the post side to the top of the away side or the gate side. Now for the second X. With a second X, we don't need to waste the nice long material of stock that we've already have the cedar. Instead, I'm using scrap pieces and line it up exactly where I wanna make this cut. Now I'm also gonna use a full eight foot board just to make sure it's nice and straight. Establish those markings, bring them to my saw, establish the cut, make sure it's snug. Cut, make sure it's on the longer side instead of the shorter side. Again, you want this method to be snug, that way it'll actually reinforce. Are you finally cleaning up my mess? Because somebody needs to take care of this. I think we can all relate with this gentleman's workbench. For the actual post side, I didn't want to connect the post to the actual framing of my house, mostly because as you can see here, I have some gutter running through. So I'm using a spacer block on the very top that's gonna to create an equal distance, but on the reinforcement part. So if you've watched these videos before, you know my opinion on attaching posts to houses. Not a fan. Generally, you would want your post to be independent from the house. As the seasons pass, your house and your fence posts are gonna settle and rise in different measures it could lead to damage to the house or to the to the fence post but we're really worried about damage to the house if you set your post correctly with the correct support you don't need to attach them to the house uh, i would rather just do it right and nice sturdy posts and not attach to the house um, just my opinion make sure you drive it right into the framing of the house and not just the sheet of plywood that's down there okay for added support, I added another support piece behind the spacer block and then ran some screws through it. This is mostly to kind of limit the amount of sway that this fence could possibly have. I'm not sure about that. So if, if he's saying uh, the block was directly into the stud of the house, but then there's a block next to it or behind it, either this house has some massive studs in it, uh, or at least one of those isn't going to be attached to the stud. Again, it just it could lead to long-term damage of the house. For the actual fencing, I'm using the half inch by six inch wide cedar picket fencing. I decided to start the first two pieces on the outside edges that would be. It looks like he's about 12 inches above and below the top and bottom of the gate frame itself. Really, you would wanna shoot more for like for a six inch exposure. Now I know he's using cedar pickets on cedar rails. Great, it's a fantastic upgrade from treated pine but having so much distance between the structure and the edge of that picket could lead over time to it warping and twisting uh, you'd want to be as close to that structure as possible we like six inches there's fence guys that are six, eight, 10 inch. That's fine for us. I prefer six inches. All right, so I got two of the picket fences started on each side. That's basically where the hinges are going. So I need the hinges to go through them. Um, these are six inch heavy duty gate hinges that I'm using. I've never used them before. I don't know what they're rated for, but they said heavy duty and they're like pretty. So. so this is a thing where, so these are likely from a home improvement store and they said heavy duty on the packaging. So by golly, they must be heavy duty or this particular manufacturer just slapped heavy duty on some packaging and, and hope somebody bought it thinking they were heavy duty. These hinges are fairly undersized, in my opinion, for the gate opening. In general, you see this when buying hardware from a home improvement store rather than through you know, a, a supply house that supplies that particular industry. Depending on depending on where you live, you there's likely multiple fence companies in your area that sell to the public that would sell some quality hardware um, that would do a better job of supporting this gate. Uh, unfortunately, I think he's going to have a bad experience with this hardware over time. I'm sure it'll look great when he's done. For the size gate this that we're talking about, a little bit over five foot per leaf, 
Um, hinges are fairly undersized. I'm going to give them a try. I'll let you guys know in a couple of months how they do. I will advise you when it comes to installing these gates, have an extra set of hands nearby for somebody to hold these gates. They are very heavy and it just is awkward to get them all lined up just right. So in my situation, I learned my lesson the hard way and, uh, you know, end of the day, the fence went up safely and I didn't break my back. So that's a huge win for me. You would definitely want to have another set of hands. If nothing else, to make it easier for yourself, but really another set of eyes is always a good idea too. And when it came to finally installing the remainder of the picket fencing, you could always use outdoor screws as well. In my situation, I have. Looks like he's just kind of eyeballing these pickets in. Um, you would certainly want something uh, to show you level between your far left and your far right picket if they're already up that way to make sure they're nice and straight i would prefer some sort of jig just to make sure it's all nice and straight and even all right guys let's talk about a few things about setting the post very simple process a couple of key things to know dig a hole that's at least 24 inches deep some expert might even argue about putting a post that's one third of the distance of the post that's a pretty good rule of thumb so 30 inch minimum would meet an astm standard 24 inches is a good starting point 30 inches obviously better like most residential fences aren't going to need to meet ASTM standards but it's a standard for a reason the important thing here though is going to be to check the frost depth in your area so we live in green county missouri so i would google green county missouri frost depth and it would tell you the depth at which the ground could freeze over the course of a winter you would want to do six inches below that that way the the part of that post is below the frost depth to avoid frost heave. Number two, throw some gravel mix at the very bottom of the post. It allows for it to work as a drainage system uh, so the water doesn't get pulled up and knock your post out. It kind of drains and absorbs to the soil. That's going to depend on your soil in your area. Uh, I mean, you can do it. It's not going to hurt anything, but I think there's some arguments on whether it's actually useful at all. And you're encasing it in concrete anyway. So at... You can try it, absolutely, but don't don't think there's going to be a lot of positive benefit to it. Number three, you want to use a post that's actually pressure treated. You can go the other alternative method where you apply the pressure treated stuff yourself. It gets weird. Just spend the money, get yourself the pressure treated material itself. I would argue you would actually spend the money on a steel post uh, so that you didn't worry about sagging over time. You certainly wouldn't want to use an untreated post. Uh, maybe that's what he's talking about. I haven't seen anyone do pressure treating on site. I think he's probably talking about staining and sealing it. If you're going to use wood, pressure treated, make sure it's ground rated, ground contact rated. Pressure treatment in general terms isn't doesn't talk to a certain uh, strength of the treatment. Ground contact rated means that it has enough treatment in it that it should withstand uh, you know, the rot and decay that you would see in an actually ground contact post. And lastly, the type of mix that you use, you can use any kind of concrete. Uh, they have the stuff that's a quick setting mixture from Quick Crate, and they specifically market it for posts. So what you do is you basically just dump the bag inside and then take a garden hose from the top, water it, and it, it tends to be kind of created for you not to have to mix it in the wheelbarrow and then dump it in, but kind of set it that way. I like that he used concrete, and he used it per the manufacturer's recommendations. We've reviewed videos that have used other products, foam or some of them have just packed the dirt around the post. I like that he's using concrete. It'll give it a nice, strong foundation. And then make sure, lastly, to use a level. Set a level, make sure it's not swaying one side or the other, and then put a couple of little support pieces, two by fours, nail them or screw them to it, let them cure overnight, and then get to building. So hope you guys find those helpful. Now, the problem with this is that hinge post is unsupported. Now, he screwed his other post to the house, which could lead to damage long-term, who knows? Uh, but this post is simply unsupported. Unfortunately, I think the gate's probably already sagging if we look at the gap between the two. Uh, let's finish it out. Now, let's fast forward to the beginning. I think we'll see it a little bit better there. The trailer fits perfectly in the side of my house. I couldn't be happier with how everything turned out. The gate looks and works fantastically. The little added wheel at the bottom is perfect addition for the sloped terrain that's right outside this gate. So probably what he's done is put the wheel on there supporting the gate with the unsupported post in hopes that it won't pull it over as much. The problem is the wheels end up putting everything in a bind more often than they actually provide uh, support. Let's scroll back to the beginning. So if we look here, so the unsupported gate has already fallen. Um, it, we see a wider opening at the bottom than at the top and the top rails don't line up. I'm not sure if he actually accomplished uh, the task of a no sag gate. I don't know. 
Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, what you may have done differently. If you'd like to watch the entire video unedited without commentary, we'll include the link in the description below. For now, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors, and I'll see you next time.